Statistics show that 152 million children worldwide are victims of child labor, 88 million are boys, and 64 million are girls. On the show today, we will be discussing the topic, child labor, facts and statistics. Hello and welcome. I am Olu Joke Mosako on Let's Talk. My guest is Mrs. Kweju Oshoba, National Lead, Child First Welfare Foundation, Nigeria. Stay with us. Thank you for coming on the show, ma'am. It's nice to have you. It's a pleasure. Okay. Okay. So, um, like I said, the topic is child labor, facts and statistics. How would you define child labor? In a way that would be clear, yes. I would define child labor as any kind of um, work that a child does mm -hmm. that impedes the development of the child in any way and involves um, some level of exploitation, is um, not commensurate with the age of the child or, has a neg or could have negative implications for the health and total well-being of the child and its development, then I would call that um, child labor. Okay, so how did we come to this point that uh, we, have, we have to start talking about child labor? Looking at the African setting and by, by implication Nigeria, you know, um, before now we had situations where um, the, the kind of relationship within families, within extended families was such that um, a relatively um, wealthy person takes on the care of, the, of a poor relative. And at that time, it was done because um, it was an opportunity to lift that family out of their situation. But over time, things developed. The economic situations around the world um, were changing. And so a lot of things also changed with it. And it became an issue where people were now paying children to do their work. And of course, when they pay, it's the adult that gets the money. The children are often or most times exploited. And then you had, um, like I said, economic issues all over the world. You have situations of conflicts and war that got children on the way. You had um, um, results from conflicts from wars where we had child-headed families. And so children had to begin to fend for themselves. So it was a variety of um, actions in different locations in the world that brought us this far. And then you would also want to consider the fact that um, child labor is relatively cheap. It's cheaper than engaging adults. And so people felt a bit more comfortable making more money using children than adults. So um, basically, these are some of the um, things that brought us to this ridiculous position that we have found ourselves. Okay, while you were talking, you made mention of Africa. I want you to please um, give us the, high, the ratio of the continent that has the highest uh, record of uh, child labor. Definitely, Africa has the highest. And, you know, um, recent, in recent times, um, figures have shown that there has been a reduction a gl globally in the number of children in child in labor. But um, somehow you find that although there's a global reduction in figures, the figures from Africa and West Africa particularly has increased. I don't know if um, that makes some sense. Globally, there's a reduction. I don't want to, I can't put my hand on the exact figures now, but let's say um, in, the, in the in previous years, it was 200 million children in labor. And this year we have 150. That's a reduction of 50 million. But this reduction is accounted for in the other continents of the world. In Africa, it has been on the increase. Although there's a global reduction in figures, in Africa, there has been an increase, and particularly in West Africa. This is the observation in recent times. Okay, so in other words, we are getting there, right? Like um, to actually eradicate uh, child labor, there is a headway. We're making some progress. We're making some progress because in recent times, you see um, governments and states uh, making commitments to the eradication of child labor, and there are uh, moves globally um, even in, within continents, in the sub-regions and, and in particular countries, everyone is making an effort. It may not be in the same proportion. It may not be as fast as we think, but there are efforts. You talk about um, the, the SDG goals you are looking at, at um, Alliance, the, what, the new Alliance 8.7, that's goal seven target, um, goal eight 
target seven that talks about decent work. And now you have countries coming together to form an alliance to fight against child labor and eradicate um, child labor. So if you look at such steps and you see at the at regional levels that you have, um, there's the African Union um, Action Plan on the eradication of child labor. There's also the, the um, ECOWAS policy on child labor, which, is all, which are all efforts towards um, fighting child labor. So there, there are efforts globally, there are efforts regionally in the sub-region, there are efforts and even at country levels, you have efforts and having policies that will determine the way um, the fight against child labor will go. And you would also, um, we may also want to consider that um, there are some ratifications that have, have come up in terms of um, some international um, legal documents. We have countries committing to the implementation of all these um, ILO conventions towards the eradication of child labor. So we're making progress. And on the ground, you find civil society also collaborating with governments to ensure that um, children in child labor are taken out of it and they are rehabilitated and put in, back into the society and they live the kind of life that the child anywhere in the world should be living. So what is the supposed minimum age for child labor? Yeah, it depends. Actually, no child should be, that we shouldn't be talking about um, the minimum age for child labor. We should be talking about the minimum age of work. Okay. Ordinarily, no child should be involved in child labor. But we can talk about the minimum age of work. And it's this, um, it depends on, it goes, it's different from one country to another. The, the, um, the global acceptance of the age of childhood is 18. So if we take it off from there, a child is anyone under 18. But then there's, there are laws, there are legal instruments that permit children within a certain age to engage in work, but not work that is detrimental to their health, not work that is detrimental to their well-being. So we'll be talking about minimum wage. And globally, I think um, the, some countries have 14, some have 15, but there are efforts to ensure that there's a, a, a global position on this. And I will put it right now between 14 and 15. But don't forget that I said that it is not work that is exploitative, it is not work that is detrimental to, to the development of the child. It is work that is suitable for the child and it is not exploitative in any way in that the child is being remunerated accordingly. So can you please um, roll out the kind of work that is not exploitative and the kind of work that is exploitative? It's, it's a difficult one because there are quite a number of things that people do that adults engage in, in terms of work that children can also do. But what I say, what I've said before, and I'm saying again, is that it does not in any way impede the development of the child. For example, any kind of work that takes the child out of the basic educational level that should be attained is labor. If a child that's, that should be in school is working to get money, then that is detrimental to the development of the child is not acceptable. If the child is doing some work and um, there are no gadgets to protect the child from any form of danger, then it is, or, or when a child works with um, tools that, that could um, harm the child. For example, we put a child to work in mines, it's not acceptable for children to work in mines, it's not acceptable for children to work in agricultural um, farms, of course, the small farm work that a child does along with the family is not child labor for as long as there's an adult to supervise and the work that does not um, get too much for the child. But when you are talking about children working in farms, in cocoa farms, in mining situations and all, those are work that are detrimental to the life of the child and is not acceptable. Um, when children who go into, issue, into fishing, that's a Greek, of course, into welding, and they are not, they are not wearing, wearing any protective gears, there are no adults to supervise, those kind of work could be termed as detrimental. So it's a, it's a large um, field of um, a different work if we begin to talk about them one by one. But what is basically important is the work should not in any way stand in the way of the child in developing the proper way a child should develop in terms of education, the, right to, the child has the right to development, that right should be enjoyed. The child has the right to participation and the right to leisure 
those are things you want to consider. So any work that does not allow a child to have some time for leisure is detrimental. You want any, any child that exposes any work that exposes the child to any form of exploitation where the child is working and overworking and somebody else is benefiting from it, whether financially or otherwise, it is detrimental to, um, to the life of the child and it, it's tantamount to child labor, which is not acceptable for any child. Thank you so much for that. Let's quickly go on this break. And when we come back, we continue from there. Stay with us. If you're just joining us, the program is Let's Talk. And the topic has been child labor facts and statistics. My guest has also been Mrs. Keju Oshoba, National Lead, Child First Welfare Foundation, Nigeria. So stay with us again. Before we went on that break, um, we we're talking about the kind of job that is actually defined or designed to be called child labor. Now, going forward, let's talk a little about the role of the child labor played the role the child labor played during the industrial revolution and what it is now you know like i said earlier i said that um when you talk about child labor we we talk about situations of conflict i was trying to look at what's what's um why do we have child labor or what are the factors that contribute to child labor and i said war and conflict and so when you are talking about the industrial revolution something preceded in the industrial revolution and you know when people are coming out of some chaotic situation is a desperate move to get back on track and so at that time it's a kind of um, all hands must be on deck and so you have children being involved in the the return to normalcy but of course, in situations when they are detrimental to the life of the child, it becomes a problem. But now, seeing that it was having its negative effect on the development of children, generally, the world had to sit down. Leaders of the world, people who were interested in, in the life, well-being of the child, had to sit down to say, okay, let's look at it. If children must work, under what conditions? What age will make a child work? And so... That's this, um, coming up from that revolution, we, we now have a lot of laws in place. We have a lot of um, um, legal instruments in place to control the involvement of children in labor such that it does not harm the development of the child. But today we are back in that situation where the economic situation of the world is going haywire. And so you have people being forced, kind of when I say being forced, I mean, Poverty has forced a lot of families to, um, let, to get their children involved in labor. And coming back to uh, conflict situations, we have children who have forced to move from one place to another, whether in company of their parents or by themselves. And as a result of this movement, they are, they are ex exposed to um, detrimental conditions through their journey or even on arrival where they are going. So migration has become another issue that has contributed to child labor today. And so you have um, um, the world coming together. You have the Global Compact on Migration that considers the, 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 the effect um, of migration on children on the move, the category of children that move from one place to another. So um, events that happen always shape what direction the world will go, such that we do not destroy the future of the world by destroying our children. So how do we totally get this out of the way? Direct and indirect form of child labor, especially um, starting from the home front to the other levels of, um, to the government. From the home front, we must understand that the child has to be a child. A child, um, childhood is a face, is a face and has um, the its own um, peculiarities. And so when we get a child involved in child labor, we are taking childhood away from that child. And as soon as the child becomes an adult, it cannot go back to childhood. And so you have a lot of um, adults today who have grown 
um, who have grown in age, but have not grown in different, in, in other ways, in terms of the fact that they did not go through their childhood the way it should have been. And so from the home, we must first understand that the child is a child. I will say it that way, that the child is just a child and should be allowed to go through childhood the way it should be. Having said that, we must begin to consider that violence often also leads children into um, child labor. And so from the home front, we want to be sure that we are living in a life that is not, um, that is not, um, that is not totally in conflict or all the time in conflict. And we, we have to, as adults, take responsibility for children and ensure that they grow well. And of course, all of us must now contribute to our communities, to peace within our communities, and we ensure that children are not used for labor within the communities where we live in. Once we are able to identify this as child labor, we must step in and we must not sit and say it does not concern us because what goes around eventually comes around. The laws are there. The policies are there. It is people that make laws and policies to work. So we must begin to ensure that the laws that we have, the policies that we have, the instruments that we have to protect the child in all ways, they are made to work. And we take our responsibilities wherever we find ourselves to ensure the safety of the child. Now, where a child must work, not labor, we ensure that the safety of the child is not compromised in any way. That way, we keep the conversation going. What we are doing now is a contribution towards the eradication of child labor because um, one way or the other, people will get to hear about this, people will get to be enlightened, people will get to be sensitized, and then all of us can stand to fight against the evil of child labor. It's a menace, it's all over the world, it's not limited to any particular country, although, like I said, the figures are different from one place to another, but it is it's a fight that all of us must stand up to face and eradicate within our society. We can, one step at a time, we can do it. Do you have any final word? A final word. Yes. Child labor is evil and we must all stand up to fight it. Thank you so, so much for your time. It's been wonderful having you on the show. Thank you once again. And to you out there, thank you too for always watching Let's Talk. I hope you've been able to learn one or two things. Child labor is a menace that we all must come together to eradicate. And I'm going to leave you with this word. Um, picking from what uh, Ms. Oshoba said, let us help eradicate child labor by doing the needful. We should allow the child to go through childhood so that they won't be ripped off of the beautiful experience they would have gotten before getting to an adult um, age. Until next time, I remain Oluja Kemosako. Bye for now.